What's going on guys? Chris at Retro Bass and, and today I'm going to show you how to rig up your 2019 Tracker Classic. Okay, well, this may not be my 2019 Tracker Classic, but it is my 2018 Tracker Heritage, which was the basis for this year's release of the Classic. The 2018 Tracker Heritage had such a great response from everybody out there that Bass Pro Shops and Tracker Boats decided to uh, reissue that boat. The 2019 Tracker Classic has a few differences over the 2018 version. There's going to be a 50 horsepower on there, a couple different electronic packages, and of course the color scheme is different. So if you're new to the channel, Retro Bass is all about the glory days and what I consider the classic days of professional bass fishing. When you had larger than life characters like Bill Dance, Roland Martin, Jimmy Houston dominating the Saturday morning scene, and again those early days of Bass Pro Shops when you actually had to dial that 800 number to get the tackle that you wanted instead of go to the website or the store itself. What we love to do here is go out on the water with vintage tackle, rods, reels, electronics, and a vintage-ish boat and see if they still catch fish today. Today we're going to take a walk through with the retro rig here. I'm going to show you how we outfitted it with some vintage old school electronics. We definitely rigged it old school. Uh, it's been a fun challenge. It's been a fun project. Let's show you how we did it. If you look at the first Bassmaster Classic, there were no power poles, no sir. But on most boats at the first Bassmaster Classic, you did see a lot of this. This is an Anchormate anchor system. It's a 10 pound mushroom anchor and this manual winch. When I'm cruising along at 30 miles an hour in this boat, not a huge deal. But back when I had the Skeeter uh, cooking it at 65 or even some of the new boats that go 85, you probably don't want a 10 pound skull crusher sitting at the bow of the boat. I found this new in the package on eBay, but they actually do still sell them. Probably don't sell a ton of them. So let's say we get to a spot where we want to do a little fishing. I unhook, this is a little safety uh, latch that I did. Here's the quick release, ready? If I can turn it the right way. And there our anchor goes and dropping down. Now, when it comes time to wind it up, and I'll show you how this gets a little bit dicey, I start cranking, and notice that line is bunching up right on the bottom. So normally I've got to take another hand as I'm winding and make sure that none of those wraps go down here. Otherwise it gets underneath here. This is like a grease pit. It's a total mess. I really only use this thing if I'm anchoring anywhere from, we'll say eight to five foot, sort of that sweet spot. For deeper water anchoring, this thing doesn't hold great, and winding it up is really a pain. It's really hard to keep that line on there without tangling it up. Here we are at the bow. I want to show you the electronics that we have cooking at the front of the boat. This is a Fen Color 160 CLC. So I will show you this is pretty sweet. Straight out of the 1987 Bass Pro catalog. Boom, there we go. New from Fenwick, Fen Color, uh, the first. LCD sonar fish finder in brilliant color uh, for the low low price of $459 and there you can see that amazing detail on that um, I mean wow who needs a helix when you've got a Fen color 320 or, or 160 so that's our main unit that we've been using I actually like this unit it works fine it tells me the depths it tells me what's going on down there it looks sweet and boy to have a, a unit in color what are they going to think of next? This piece took a while to find and I, I think it probably took a little while to install as well. So here we go. Straight out of the 1991 Bass Pro Shops catalog, the bottom line side finder scout. You're probably wondering what the holy heck this thing is. So here we've got a catalog Bass Pro Shops 1991 Outdoor World Master Catalog. And here we go. Introducing the side scanning scout side finder that sees to the side through weed beds rocks under docks or anywhere else that fish hide Basically what this does you mount this thing on your trolling motor Just about five degrees below horizontal and it will scan out to the side 
Of course, every high-end electronic does that these days, but this was really, at the time, pretty revolutionary. This Mark 24 shows you the first fish is 24 feet away from you in whichever direction you happen to have that fish finder pointing. Here's the owner's manual for the side finder scout. Here's my favorite part about this thing. Uh, something for the kids or the kid in you. Your scout has an entertainment option, a game. Press the power key and hold for 10 seconds. Release and a mock pinball game is displayed. That looks like uh, pretty much Atari. Let's see if this thing works. So I press and hold power key for 10 seconds. 1 1,000, 2 1,000, 3 1,000, 4 1,000, 5 1,000, 6 1,000, 7 1,000, 8 1,000, 9 1,000, 10 1,000. Oh, that just turned it off. All right, so we're going to press and hold this thing for 10 seconds. Ready? 1 1,000, 2 1,000, 3 1,000, 4 1,000, 5 1,000, 6 1,000, 7 1,000, 8 1,000, 9 1,000, and 10. <laughs> oh, wait. <laughs> oh, here we go. Oh. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Oh. I used to be pretty good at pinball, too. Oh, I'm still in play. Oh, and there she goes. If you grew up fishing in the 1990s, there's a good chance you went through a few gallons of this stuff. Sparkle scales. Boy, this is really one of not the first fish scent out there, but definitely the most successful, the most well-known at the time. It's a fish scent that was made by Fish Formula. Bill Dance had a lot to do with this thing gaining popularity back in the day. And I'm gonna show you, we've got a pretty sweet setup up front, because I guess we still use this, I, I don't know why. This is my 1987 Bass Pro Shops catalog. And of course, you can see the man himself, Mr. Bill Dance, endorsing his Fish Formula. All the different flavors. And look at this, the Formula Buddy. So here's the Fish Formula Tackle Buddy I have mounted to the deck of the Heritage. Of course, it's got your crawfish, sparkle scales, shad, and game fish. Also has a nice little spot to keep your pliers. So here we are at the console, and really the crown jewel of my electronics package is this guy. My Tom Man Super 60 Flasher. Really the one of the original flashers out there. About as old as it gets, about as antiquated as it gets, but at the time, it was pretty darn revolutionary. Here's how it works. So we'll turn it on. You're going to have a couple different marks here. The first main mark is going to be your surface, and then the bottom is going to be the second echo. You can adjust the sensitivity, you can adjust the noise, and any blips in the middle will be fish. The funny part about this thing is it, it hums like a... I don't know what. It, it hums really loud. It, when I'm under power, I will have this on. When I get to a fishing spot, I actually turn this off. It's kind of distracting. It makes the whole console shake. So I'll turn it off, but I love this thing. It looks awesome. Uh, it absolutely fits the boat, and it definitely, definitely gets the job done. So got a compass here to help me get around. Honestly, this thing's seen better days. It's, it's a little sad. It's kind of doesn't really stay put, um, but I don't use it ton. Topo Chica holder and the one mod I did on this thing sort of the one non retro mod was this I added a little little magnetic thing for my phone so I can put my phone there if I'm cheating using this for GPS I put it right there dodge and work calls whatever um, and on my key there's a pose super cedar keychain I got from a Rick Clun pack one of my favorite vintage pieces on this boat is this guy, the Color Selector, developed by the late great Dr. Lauren Hill. This is still available today, I think from Spike It, but you certainly don't see them mounted on boats anymore, um, at least not by the likes of Kevin Van Dam or, or Scott Martin. But Scott's dad used to use it. So how does this thing work? Well, um, what you do is you take this probe here, and I'll see if I can show this. So here's a little probe that the color selector comes with. You drop this over the side. We're going to turn the color selector on. 
and it will tell us the best color to use. Boom. Of course, being that we're not in water, it really won't tell us a whole lot. But it'll tell you which color to use in either clear, stained, or muddy water. By today's standards, you could call this a gimmick, but in 1988, this was a legitimate, legitimate product. So here we have a full two-page spread dedicated to the color selector. Just about every lure company back in the day had lures that were color selector lures. Kind of amazing when you think of all the natural finishes that, that came out at the same time that you would have something like this. None of the fish units we have have any sort of GPS marking system. But occasionally I'll catch fish and I will want to mark the spot. This is the Lindy Buoy Marker Buoy Rack Pack. It's got three different buoys on them. What you do is you basically take this thing off, unwind this nice lead weight, throw the thing over the side, and it'll mark your spot. And if you find maybe another spot to mark, or maybe a point, you're good to go. Up front, I've got this bin here. This is my vintage worm slash lizard crawl bin. Some old Berkeley Power Worms, some cream scoundrels, basically, and jelly worms, auger tails. Any old worms I've got, I throw them up here. It kind of keeps my worms somewhat organized. One of the complaints about this boat is you can see our seat here, our bucket seat. In this position, it's just fine, but as soon as you turn, in theory, your feet are falling off that ledge. Um, I thought about adding a some sort of a, a wall there. I ultimately did not, and I'll show you why. A lot of folks I saw on the forums added a deck extension on the 2018 Tractor Heritage. I didn't, and there were two main reasons I wanted maximum space, not on the deck, but behind it. And here they are. Hi. Oh. So from the perspective of having kids with you, I love all this space in here. I didn't want to cut into that. Um, yes, I got to be careful when I turn around so I don't go flying off the seat. Um, but overall, I like the extra space down here. I'd rather have that for the kids to hang out, to play. When we do go fishing, they're not fishing the entire time, so it's nice for them to get a little break. So we'll leave that as is. Generally speaking, this is not a good position to be in. I'm in the back of the boat, I'm getting front-ended by that guy there, and on top of that, I don't even know what depth of water we're fishing. I really try not to stick it to my uh, back of the boat angler, and one thing that I added to this boat was actually a fish finder for this position as well, and I'll show that to you. Well, so here's a vintage Eagle uh, 7200 fish finder, and this thing is a nice uh, unit. I believe I got this out of the 1991 Bass Pro catalog as well. Again, not the most up-to-date unit, but at the time, this thing cost you darn close to 500 bucks to get this thing done. Back at the first Bassmaster Classic, I'm pretty sure they were allowed like one tackle box with 15 pounds of gear in it. If you tried to enforce that sort of rule today, you'd have full-on anarchy uh, on the professional trail. For the most part, all of my tackle goes in this main compartment. It's actually pretty roomy, and it can hold pretty much everything that we need. Got your flying lures. Some Uncle Josh pork rind, which they stopped making after 90 years. Crazy. All right, who can guess what's in here? The egg crate. Yeah, some Fred Young Big O's. Not the originals. No, I wouldn't fish with those. Oh, how'd that get in there? <laughs> Whoops. Bill Dance Dancing Eel Pack. Ah, there are the Rebel Rednecks. Roland Martin, Helicopter Lure Pack. Let's get these tackle boxes out of here. I'm not gonna go through every nook and cranny of every tackle box, but I will give you a quick overview of the different boxes that I keep. For the most part, everything is organized, whether it's crankbaits, top water, in the same general box. Okay, so this is pretty much where we keep all of the retro vintage topwaters. Everything from the Power Pack Lures, Torpedoes, Doug Hannon Frog, Bill Plummer Frog. Anybody remember this thing? The Hedden Zara Mouse. 
I don't know how you would ever hook a bass with that. But we'll try. And some other stuff. Dug a hand in snakes. Sweet. All right, here's my Rebel 600 tackle box. And in here, Crankbait City. This is pretty much a medium diving crankbait box. Got some bombers, got some Bagley Fat Cats. Uh, I've got some Mystic Shads. Pose RC3, RC1s. Some Rebel Black Stars. Uh, some Bill Norman Bass Magnets. Love those things. Here we go. Uh, some Storm Pre Rapala Wiggle Warts with the jacked up lips that hunt really well. Overall, I have been absolutely in love with this boat. I did have one pretty major mishap, and I'm sure it's happened to some other folks out there. I'll show you the actual gas line itself. It's got this weird connection, and it has come apart on me two times. Normally, that wouldn't be a big deal because, eh, all the gas would be at least in that part of the boat. Trick is, with these trackers, this tackle compartment was not sealed. And there were absolutely some really big gaps. So on the day that we had the spill, me and my buddy just got to the river. We launched. I realized that not only the back of the boat had gas in it, but all of my tackle boxes, my life jackets, my camera gear, everything was filled with gas. It took me about two days to clean out the gas. After I did that, I bought like three tubes of caulk and I caulked the ever-living snot out of this thing. So overall, I'm pretty happy with it. You can see these seams. There is nothing that's gonna get through there. So I caulked each angle up and down all the way around. So hopefully that'll help. This is one of the favorite mods that I did to this thing. I, for anyone who's seen my video on taking off the engine stickers, what we did is we ended up peeling off all of the factory stickers that came with them. I ordered this online. Um, I think it was like BoatDecals.com. But anyway, it's an old school reproduction of a Mercury 40 at the boat ramp. The number one showstopper, aside from the Tom Man Super 60, it's this thing. And nobody can figure out what kind of engine I've got. All right, well, let's talk about this. If you visit the forums at all, you know that the 2018 Tracker Heritage had a real problem with these guys coming off. I actually ended up losing one on the way to the lake. It flew off, never to be seen again. I ended up taking the other one off and I'll keep this as a souvenir dish. Maybe I'll put it on the wall. A bit of a bummer. I love the look of the moon hubcaps. I wish they stayed on. They ended up completely changing the design for the 2019 Classic, so no worries there. You guys are good to go. You're not gonna have to deal with this, which is nice. All right, guys, this concludes my walkthrough of my 2018 Tracker Heritage Edition. If you're lucky to pick up a 2019 Classic, enjoy it. Uh, hopefully, they gave you a few good ideas or, or maybe a few bad ideas. I don't know. Anyway, we'll see you on the water. Tune in if you want to see us fishing this thing with some old vintage equipment. And until then, I hope that you fish it old school. You're still here? It's over. Go home.